if you're going in and you can guarantee that you will be at the top of that class and you're able to maintain that position, you raise your chances of actually getting a company contract. Do it again. Welcome to Ballet Wise. My name is Michael Wise. I am your host and creator. This entire video series is based on the idea of me having gone through so many experiences in the ballet world and me bringing that information to you to help you move forward with your dream as a ballet dancer or finding out if you're ready to make that next step. So to start off today, today's topic is going to be college or company. So many dancers have to come to this crossroad. And it's a very difficult subject for so many people to understand. So today we're going to kind of try to cross that out, kind of go over the pros and the cons of both sides of it. And hopefully we can help you make the right decision for you. So first things first, I'm not a medical professional. I don't play one on television. I am just a ex-principal dancer I'm the first American male to have ever been a principal dancer in the Soviet Union. I have danced all over the world. I've worked with big companies, small companies, mid-sized companies. I've had good experiences, bad experiences, and I've learned an awful lot throughout the years. I've helped students move on to professional careers. I've helped students move on to better programs. I've helped so many people over my lifetime that I'm here now to give you the same advice and help you move forward with your dreams. So let's start off with today. Today we're here to talk about Emily. Emily wrote us a very wonderful email the other day, and a lot of her questions come from this point of view. She is about to graduate from high school. She's been dancing all of her life. She's been going off to excellent programs in the summer, but she's kind of like that average girl that has great dreams to move on to professional careers. She understands that she's not ready, but she wants to know what her next step should be. We also have another email from Deborah, who just graduated from college. She went to an excellent college with, with, for dance, and now she's ready to make her next steps. What are the pros and the cons? So we're gonna tackle these two sides of the same story. So moving forward, you have to understand as a young dancer, that there's a big wide world out there that we will not understand. Dreams are one thing. The reality can be something entirely different. So you're now at this point and we've, we're just gonna take it from these two different points of view. Should you go into a trainee program with a company or should you go to a college that offers an excellent dance program. Both of these are possible viable option, options, but it really is gonna come down to what you want from them and what your purpose is. So let's first follow the track of you're gonna go into, you've been offered a trainee position or an apprenticeship position with an established company. It could be a small company, it could be a medium company or a large company, but they're all very similar. Some of you have also heard that we only take dancers from our own program. And that's an incentive to try to push people who are interested in their program to go. But quite often, you're gonna be in a position where you're gonna be paying tuition. You're probably gonna to have to hold down a second job. So it's not gonna be an easy life. But it's viable. But most people are not necessarily mature enough or ready for something along these lines. That's where the college side comes in. Quite often, you're getting a college degree at the same time that you're actually able to work on your training, you're gonna get performance experiences, you're gonna get that extra step that you weren't able to get either at your home studio or your professional school. Some companies only want people coming in through their trainee programs. 
some people are interested in dancers that have come from college programs because they know they're more mature and they don't have to waste time with them. One of the biggest pet peeves in a lot of companies is when they hire a dancer that's brilliant, ready, technically, they're not ready mentally. They are not mature enough. They, they still feel like they want to go out and do a lot of partying or their emotional hand baskets because they're constantly in and out of bunches of different relationships. They have not gone through that process that a lot of college students go through. So you have to understand where are you in that dynamic? Are you one of those homebody people that have been living, eating, and breathing ballet for your entire life? You're super committed. You have the discipline that you're not going to be going out and partying. You may be ready for that trainee program. Now, why should you go to that trainee program over college? I would tell you that if you're going to go into that trainee program, you need to know that you're going to be at the top of that class. Because only a small number of people are going to get out of those programs. It's a risk, but dance is always a risk. Professional careers are a risk. So that's something that you need to kind of get used to. There is no guaranteed way to get all the way into that company until it happens. But a trainee program, especially with those companies that say they only pull from within whether it is called their graduate program or a trainee or an apprenticeship, multiple companies will say they only pull from those. Do not go into those programs if you're at the bottom of the class. Because you know what? You're going to be free labor for them and you're never going to make it into the company. I have seen way too many dancers that are actually good come out of excellent trainee programs, have not made it into a company. Seriously, it's not as easy as a lot of people think. You're looking at only the maybe the top 1% of their program, if a position comes available, that they'll pull from. I know some people that have gone into trainee programs and have spent three years as a trainee, never gotten a contract, never will. I know other people that have gone into trainee programs and within their first year, they're already being considered for a company position. The difference between the two is one went into a trainee position with hopes and dreams, but she was not the right fit for the company. But they used her anyway because they're gaining money, because you're paying tuition quite often. You're free labor for the company. You're part of the corps de ballet, but you're not being paid as the corps de ballet. It's kind of like a Ponzi scheme. You're kind of being sucked in. You're having to pay money, but you're actually not getting into the company. That's why you need to make sure that you're reducing your risk. If you're going in and you can guarantee that you will be at the top of that class and you're able to maintain that position, you raise your chances of actually getting a company contract. Now, let's say you're coming from another point of view. You haven't necessarily been offered, or you have, but you know you're probably not going to be at the top level of the trainees, or whether you're in that graduate program. But let's say your family is pushing you to get that college education. Not necessarily a bad thing. There are companies right now that are going to definitely want to look at you after you've graduated from an excellent program because you're more mature. You're definitely ready. You're physically and technically, hopefully you will be at the level they're looking for. But we also have to take into account the one big negative. Dance companies understand that dance is a younger art form. Most companies are looking to hire between that 18, 19, 20 range. And your career is going to last into your early to mid 30s. 
I'm not saying there aren't some dancers that get into their 40s, but the average age for people to finish their career is going to be in their mid-30s to their mid-40s. So if you go to college, you're going to get a great degree. You're going to be in a position where once your ballet career ends, you have an alternative. But the point you have to understand is you're going to be graduated from college at 22, maybe 23. Well, now you're trying to sidestep into a company. And unless they're able to put you directly into the company, you're going to go back into a trainee or graduate program. So you're starting almost from scratch. So sometimes the college track is going to be your best bet because you in a way are not ready technically. Either you don't have the confidence, you're just not there yet. There are some excellent college programs out there. Know your programs, look at the faculty, know what you're getting yourself into, look at who their graduates are. Quite often they'll talk about their alumni and you'll see the kinds of companies they've gone into. Quite often there are going to be some colleges that are going to give you, a, give you access to up and coming choreographers. They're going to give you access to either ballet masters or ballet mistress or even assistant artistic directors of companies. So it can be a very good staging ground for you. But be aware that you may have to start once you graduate from the same position that that high school student is going to get. They're going to expect for you to go at least one or two years in a trainee or an apprentice position, which are usually either you pay or they are unpaid. That may not be a good route for you. I've, I've heard from some parents that have, you know, kids have graduated from college and dance and they're confused. It's like, why are you not able to support yourself? You have this great college education. You're dancing. You're a phenomenal dancer. Well, you're always going to be a phenomenal dancer in your parents' eyes. Let's accept it. But they don't understand the dance world. They don't understand that we dance for our passion. We dance for our love. We don't dance for money. The ballet world is not where you go to get rich. The ballet world feeds us spiritually and physically. It allows us to live. Without it, we kind of shrivel up and die. So as a parent, you need to understand that your child, whether they're going into that trainee program or they're coming out of high school, that they're going to have to work a second or even a third job. They train in the morning. They work in the evenings. And on the weekends, they work even an entirely different job. That's normal. If you're a college student, you're going to be living on campus. You're going to be getting all your training. But guess what? You graduate and you're probably going to have to go through the same proposition. You're going into the company. You're going to be training again. You're going to be, you're probably going to be surrounded by people that are going to be younger than you. Once again, it doesn't mean you're going to get into that company. But you're probably going to have to hold down a second job, whether as a nanny or as a barista or, or waiting tables. That's normal. I've done it. I've been a principal dancer in a company, and in the off-season, I waited tables. I've also been in companies where I was a principal dancer, and I never had to do anything else because I did make a living wage. But this is the arts. And if you're going into the arts because you think you're going to get rich, you need to correct what you think because you need to go entirely in a different direction. As parents, you need to understand that your daughter or son lives for their passion. They're doing something that brings them joy and fulfillment. But the difference is you're going to have to work really, really hard in the studio and possibly hold down a second job. Now, whether you're going into that training program or whether you're going into that college program, the number one thing you need to be aware of is there is no guarantee you're going to get a job from it. 
I mean, you need to be aware of that. That is the hardest thing for anyone to hear. If you're going into that trainee program, and let's say you are at the top of your class, if you're not killing it every single day, if you're not impressing people every single day, you're not improving your chances to get into the company. You want to be the kind of person that people stare at when you're dancing because they just are like, oh my God, she's, just, it blows their mind. You have to do that. In one of our previous videos, we talked about how to take yourself to that next level. You have to be at that next level. So be aware that if you're not doing those things, if you're not bringing your passion into your dancing, you're going to be at a loss. If you're going into that college program, it's still the same thing. Now, so many of us have seen college dance programs. And I want to be honest with you, they're usually not the greatest things ever. But it doesn't mean that you can't be the greatest thing ever within those programs. No matter what you do, it's what you get out of it. It's how you use those programs to better yourselves. Now, if you are going into that college program, quite often you're going to have to major in dance. Can I give you a really good suggestion? You're going to need a plan B because the ballet world is unpredictable. And as I've said in previous videos where we're talking about the audition process and what companies are looking for, you may not fit the job that's open. So you should seriously think about having a double major. Because having something that you can fall back on while you're pursuing your dance, pro dance dreams might be able to give you a living wage. Just think about that. Most people aren't going to talk this way. Because, yeah, you graduated from college, but you have a degree in dance. What are you going to do with it? That doesn't actually give you anything. You know, some places, okay, great. They're going to tell you to teach, but do you know how to teach? Teaching is more than just, okay, I'm going to give a ballet class. So be aware that there are pitfalls if you do go the direction of, of college, but there are also some wonderful things you can get from it. Going into that trainee program or that graduate program, it has some great benefits. You're early on the ground. You have a greater opportunity to move up into that company. But on the other hand, you're probably not going to be as mature. You're probably going to make a lot of mistakes that may affect you in that program. And the other big thing, you're probably not going to have a backup plan. And unfortunately, as I even know, ballet careers can start and finish in a second. An injury can happen. And if you don't have that backup plan, if you don't have something else you can fall back on, you almost have to start your life all over again. And if you're not ready to do that, it can be a very abrupt change. So you as a dancer need to understand that you can put all your chips in but you might want to pull one or two chips out and just kind of have them sitting on the side for part two or plan B or when your career ends. I know a lot of people who are dancers right now that do college, online college classes. My recommendation for you is do it. Whether you're in college and you're getting your degree or whether you're a trainee or in a graduate program, you should also be working on having something else. Because whether you get into a company or not, you're always going to have to have plan B. You could get into that company and within the first two years of being in that company, you blow a knee out or you break an ankle. Some companies will wait for you. Some companies won't. Sometimes you won't recover. So you need to be very, very aware 
that either approach can be viable, but you need to be aware that either approach is no guarantee. So this is also something where whether you're in that training program and let's say you've been in it for one or two years and you're looking to take that next step and go somewhere else because you know that company's not going to let you in or whether you're that college student and you feel like you're ready, you need to go back and watch our video about how to go about the audition process because it is definitely something that leads what we're talking about. It leads directly into this. You need to be aware that there are always doors that are going to open and close and you need to be prepared. Now, I'm going to use my own story as a possibility. I graduated from North Carolina School of the Arts. I auditioned for multiple companies and never got an offer. I got an offer to go do one more year at the International Ballet School in Budapest, Hungary. Oh, well, I took it. I trained for another year and then they decided to send me to Moscow to represent the Hungarians in the international ballet competition in Moscow. From there, I ended up staying in Moscow, getting more training and eventually ended up in an excellent company and eventually made principal dancer. Now, not everyone's story is going to be like this. I'm lucky. You have to understand that there are multiple different ways to reach our dreams. And sometimes an alternate route is going to get you closer to what you want. So hopefully this has answered your question. Hopefully this will give you a little bit more guidance, whether you're that student that's looking to, to move forward, whether you're the parent of a student that's questioning, should I go into a trainee program or should I go to a college? No matter what you do, you need to do your research. You need to know what's going on. You need to know what that program is like, whether you're going into a trainee program or whether you're going off to college. There are some college dance programs that are not very good. And you need to know which ones are. There are also some training programs that are absolutely excellent and some that are just borderline free labor and you're never going to get anywhere. So be aware that there are pitfalls in both worlds. But we're not here to talk about the problems. We're here to try to give you guidance on which direction you may need to go. So remember that the ballet world is something that is very special, but it has its issues. I like to always say there are 999 reasons why you should not be a ballet dancer. And there's one reason why you should. If all you see is the one reason, you'll be able to gloss over all the garbage. But if you start really seeing those pieces of garbage, you're going to want to get out of it. And either going in the direction of a trainee or a graduate program or whether you're going into college quite often can reveal where are you on that scale. Because I hate to say it, there are more dancers out there than there are about positions in companies. And you always have to be aware of that. There will always be the lucky few that get that opportunity, but there'll be even more that will end up getting injured are burned out. So if you always hear that only the top 1% or top 2% will make it, be aware that 1% out of that 2% will probably be out of those companies in the first two to three years. It's just a fact because they didn't have, they only could see, they couldn't just see the one reason why they needed to do this. They had to see some of the 999. There's always going to be a reason why we want to stop dancing. It could be an injury. It could be the work environment. It could be my training can't hold up. There are a multitude of reasons and we're not going to go over all of them. But be aware that I'm here to give you facts, start the conversation, 
and help you make the decision that you need to make. So, if you like this kind of content, please like us and subscribe because there's going to be a lot more coming. If you have a question or you have a concern, leave us a comment because we would like to be able to bring up your subjects. We always change the names of the individuals that we're using because we want to make you feel safe and understand that we want to help others. And your story might be able to help somebody else. So remember, keep dancing. Follow your love, your passion. Remember that we're here for you. And remember, we'll be back. And next time, hopefully, we'll be able to answer your question and help you move forward with what you're doing. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.